Before we get started on this uh, review of the Crossman uh, 102, I just wanted to thank uh, D.T. Fletcher, who uh, talked with me on forums. Uh, he's kind of the, the man on these guns, so anything I tell you, I learned from him. And uh, he has lots of books and all that kind of stuff, so he's kind of the guy on Crossman's. Um, and also, uh, Trevor Adams, uh, kind of got, he's got a great website. He's been, uh, I've been collecting some uh, uh, collectible air guns, and uh, one of his posts really got me interested in looking at this because he thought this might be uh, an interesting gun to start collecting because it's uh, fairly uh, out there and inexpensive, and there are lots of them. So, thanks to those two guys, uh, this wouldn't have been possible. So, thanks much. It's a video on the uh, Crossman 102, old gun, uh, carried Crossman for 25 years. Uh, this is the, the 102 is the repeating model. Uh, it started with the 101 in 1925. Uh, the repeater, which this is, didn't get, come into existence until about 1929. Uh, again, went 25 years through the Great Depression, through World War II. I didn't make many in World War II because um, they were obviously gearing up for the war. Uh, but took it through uh, quite a few years, uh, some tough times. Um, and you know this is not a the craftsman at that point or craftsman at that point in time. It really wasn't a big shop. It was in 1940. They had crossed six employees, so you've got really uh, a small group of people making uh, these these rifles. Um, and to me, if I look at these, they're kind of a quintessential American, um, almost not really uh, gunsmithing as much as a uh, you know factory automotive, um, you know kind of quirky kind of fun because of that um, and they worked that's the key uh, they worked um, you don't have a product that goes for 25 years that doesn't work well and these did uh, some of the things I like about it uh, I love the, the carbine uh, it's very nice and uh, uh, compact five and a half pounds um, fits nice uh, you can really whip it around. Aperture sight, um, little. It seems so simplistic, and it is, but it works. Uh, you can actually get a very good sight picture going through a very small hole, and the aperture really does help as far as uh, making it very very accurate. Um, about 600 feet per second, uh, 22. These were 22s, most of them, um, almost all of them until the very end. Uh, and that's um, with about six, seven pumps. These old ones, you're not, I think in the manual, you're not supposed to go six or seven, that's about it. But I think people take them up to 10 with modern, uh, maybe valving in there, but. Um, and uh, very accurate, like I said. Trigger pull, a little bit under two pounds. Uh, extremely simplistic, but it, again, you know, with a two pound, less than a two pound pull, uh, I can be very, very accurate with it. With the uh, repeating mechanism, you uh, have a little um, container here or a little uh, magazine where you load them in, uh, put 20 in there, and it's a gravity fed, so you've got to uh, tilt it up, pull it back, this brass thing comes out, captures one, brings it in, and you're done. And you can do that 20 times. You have to have exactly the right pellet to do that with, or it's going to hang up. Um, these are a little different than uh, you know, some of the modern guns. You've got a cock, cocking uh, mechanism there. You pull back. Um, that will release and trip the valve, and it has a little power to keep it open. Um, you have to cock it to put a few pumps in there. I'll put a few. It is unloaded. And just with two pumps. Again, a, a fun gun. Uh, this was about a 1930 in the 30s, we think. Um, the some things will tell you that, but uh, I think the didn't have this uh, checkering on here. Well, that was the early guns, and about the uh, 
So it'd be about 29, 30, 32, somewhere in there, probably, for this stock. This stock is absolutely nuts. Um, you can see that curl. Um, could have been a salesman sample, not really know. Um, but this is an amazing stock. I've never, on good guns that I've had, I've never seen a stock like this. It's almost an exhibition grade, which makes this one kind of fun, really. Um, been a very fun gun, really. I've uh, been very surprised. Um, and <laughs> like I say, I think it's just a, a gun that went for 25 years because it was an excellent field gun. I can see this, uh, you know, taking uh, uh, squirrels and chipmunks and things like that very easily. Um, a gun that works. They advertise it as um, a silent, uh, cheap, uh, it was kind of important during the Depression to sell these things and uh, supported Crossman for 25 years before they started to expand into other things after the war. Kind of a fun gun. I think one thing interesting about the, the 102 is uh, how simple some of the design is for the repeating mechanism. Um, have this tube right here. I've got a little pad here. It's not necessarily I put on there just for my grip. And you, know, you load the pellets in there, pull that back, and you can put 20 pellets in there. But uh, I just want to show you how simple the, uh, the mechanism is. Just take it apart and how few parts there really are. This is a little screw that holds the cover on. That comes back. This comes off the cover. And that's really a, where the side is. Very simple, little rivet, but very effective. And you can um, actually sight it in very well with uh, going back and forth in that screw. Little parts here, little metal piece, brass piece that uh, picks up the pellet and the bolt. That's really all there is. Of course, I'm not going to take out this spring, but that is really all there is to that mechanism. Pretty simple. Put it right back. Screw back the cover, screw back the retainer. Some of the later models didn't have this retainer screw. That's all there is to it. That bolt will bring a pellet in every time you pull it back. It's a pretty smooth design really for as few parts as there are. Kind of fun. I just want to look at uh, the 102 and how the uh, stock comes off. It actually can come off naturally, um, or uh, it was meant to come off, I think, to transport if you wanted it that way. Because this screw is really meant for maybe a coin. But one crucial area that I've seen a lot of 102s um, and 101s have issues with is this seal right here. And that seal. Um, on the originals was cork like this. This is my old one. Um, I found that um, you know, I could have gotten some cork. Uh, I had some leather and I thought the leather actually uh, made more sense. So I was going to try it and what I did was put two pieces of leather together. One to go across here and the other to fit within this piece of the, uh, the gun to form that seal. You can see the indentation of the 
piece right here that um, causes it right here. And you can't really see it too well. Anyway. Um, anyway, I think this uh, did a good job. But if you don't have that, you're going to get wobble in this um, in the uh, uh, stock. And you can see right here how this chipped a little bit. And that was chipped because it did not have that protection. Um, and you start to torque it a little bit when you're pumping. And that's what will happen. So this is really important to... To keep on it if you uh, to find that the seal is no longer viable you need to replace it and this in actually would be wider this would go and the part that's broken off is the one that went clear out to here they would thin it out out here and it would be as wide as this whole thing or as big as that all that was left was that inner part okay and all you do is you have this rod that fits in and goes right there. That just screws in. Very easily, hopefully. Get it going a little bit. Then what happens is you just get a coin. Once you get that lined up, Just torque it a little bit. Actually, use a little wrench with my coin. Just get that final little oomph. That's all there is to it. But if you don't have this, I left mine uh, pretty wide. I, I think it just protects it better. Um, the ones that were cork were actually thinned down, so you barely see that, see it. But um, I, again, I like the leather. I think it it really protects everything. And this is an older gun, so protects this nice stock. So that's that. If that cork is not, if you don't have yours, uh, uh, again, that is not uh, on your gun working. You'll see this sliding around going back and forth, you need to replace it or you're just gonna end up hurting your stock.